continuation of the um, basic game marathon. And at this point, what we're moving along that may look like, by the way, like we're going in patches. Like first, you're seeing this, learning how to display, you know, data on the screen, statistics data, and then from there we kind of went to creating the map map the game where well, we basically loaded a screen on you saw me had a loaded screen on it and then after that i showed you the character editor and now of course in this one we're going to be learning about sprite and background collision this is all going to come together i promise um i'm doing this in parts to kind of show you how it would work segmentally as you're trying to build a game and eventually i'm going to pull it all together i do have a storyline for those who are asking and i've worked very hard on this for several months i put together a storyline there's a plot I have so many plans for this. Um, basic is fortunately reducing a lot of my limitations I'd like to move this toward, um, but I'm going to do my best I can to try to emulate basic as much as I can since this is the basic game marathon. I have a feeling though it's moving more toward the assembly language now because you're going to see in this session we're going to be talking about assembly language. For those who don't know, assembly language is the computer's natural native language on the Commodore 64 and all the old 8-bit systems. It allows you to talk directly to the chips on the computer. As a result of that, you're able to get fast executions going on where basic is running in time, you know, synchronizations and slowing things down with timing. So anyways, um, let's continue on to this. Now you can kind of see on the screen here, I already have a, my first um, display up here. Um, just kind of grab my little controller here to show you what's going on here. Um, as I move along here, you can see me moving along on the screen here. Um, the character is just extracted from one of the other um, programs I found, castle, whatever it was. And at this point, you see characters on the screen and the sprite, he also can animate, he can move. Now he's moving very smoothly here. You're gonna see, I'm gonna show you a little bit later, the basic example and you're gonna notice the difference. It is so slow. This uh, sprite, for example, is running in a background interrupt. So as a result of that, he's moving pretty fast across the screen. It may not look like it right now. I did set some no operations in the assembly language side to kind of slow it down a little bit. But really, I mean, this is very smooth animation. Now you see the characters over here as I move toward the screen here. You're going to see him like a little flash of light there. And what happens is he gets stuck. This is what I was kind of going on to see. He's stuck now. If I want to, I kind of have to play with him like this to get him out. So this is um, one thing I wanted to talk about. There's a flaw, which probably a lot of people know in the Comic 64. Whenever you're trying to detect background collision from register 53279, which detects the sprite against the background character, when it sets the bit, it basically determines a collision. At that point, it does work. You've seen the screen flash when he hits something, but it's not perfect. Um, so this is probably why they do a lot of bounding boxes I've seen in a lot of the Commodore 64 examples out there and I'll show you a demo of that because I did do a bounding box earlier but I'm probably in a lot of trouble trying to get the basic and the semi language communicating with each other as a result there's a lot of misfire timings going on between the basic and the semi language and what I when I create a box here there's actually a box around the player you can't see it but I'll show you the code later when I'm here, there's actually a box above him. There's one on the left and on the right side of him, which is why he's detecting that whenever he, he collides with something. There's also some reset of his positioning here. I'd probably have to fix that. But as a result of that, it's able to, you know, he, he's not colliding until he goes right into the characters. As a result, you can see I can kind of I do it right. I can slip in here. He's still going get, to end up getting stuck if I go too far again. So let's go um, and move on to the next example so i can kind of show you the basic example here now i'm also using obs studio so i love that i've got the stream working on this now as a result i can easily swap screens which you've seen me doing a lot of my other videos including i have a new video editor but that's another story altogether um i've learned how to use this and i just now realized you could actually screen capture with it correctly um, and it records videos. Well, I've done the screen capture, but it actually records videos too. So if I click a video a button here, I sh you should now see me switching my screens. I might have to reposition the screen here. Sorry about that. There was some kind of a delay there. There it goes. And if I'm switching through the screens, you can kind of see there. Okay. So we're now on to the next screen. Of course, you're going to lose the video for myself there because it's only obtained on the first one. But that's fine. So now we're looking at um, the partial screen here of um, the C64. I wonder if I can make this a full screen, by the way. Let's see. Nope. That's about as far as I'm going to get with that one. It's not going to let me go to full screen. I can move it around like this and kind of center it for you. But OBS Studio has the kind of limitations set on the size of its windows. Um, 
but anyways, um, this is the basic example. Now you'll see here, I'm going to start moving the box. You can see it. Yeah, it might not be moving as fast as the other one, but it's not doing too bad, right? I also have it moving in increments of four pixels at a time, so it looks like it's moving, but it's still all jagged, right? Not like the smooth sprite we saw moving earlier on the screen. Now, if I come up here to the character, there's a bounding box running. He's going to stop perfectly. See, he doesn't go through it. He's able, the box is able to stop directly where it needs. I can make it surround any sides here because it's basic. It's going to work perfectly because it's got that bounding box around it. Just kind of demonstrating some techniques here. The flashing, of course, indicates that I've hit the edge there to show you. Okay, so I think you get the idea, right? There's a bounding box that's preventing me from moving beyond um, areas only where I can go. So if I wanted to go in this corner, for example, I couldn't go any further either because there's, there's an area blocking me there. So now let's move over to the other example that started all this, which was how I was figuring out. Originally, I was doing a lot of calculations, and then eventually I was like, I need some kind of um, axis display to see what's really going on with my bounding box. So let me move over to that one and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is my other example. I'm going to center this one, too. This is the axis display. Let me rerun this one because it looks like it's a mess right now. It's actually it's currently running several different programs in the background here. So as a result of that... It's playing with all the different vice screens here. Okay, now if I start moving here, um, you'll see this is the axis of space. For some reason, my sprite didn't show up here. That's kind of strange. But there's a sprite background here. I may have to restart this one. Let me see here. Okay, it's like it's off the screen now or something. Look at that. Okay. All right, I'm going to get it back on the screen here and rerun this. So... It's not perfect. Okay, you can see it's actually following the sprite now, right? Um, and this is just my testing environment. So you see how as I'm moving down the characters here, it's showing me the exact characters that are surrounding the bounding box. And of course, when I come up here and I tap against something, um, it's not detecting collisions yet because this one is not set for collisions. But I'm just showing you the bounding box right now that I used to detect the collisions with. So they're on all sides. The, the letters I'm using are just representing the rows as I'm moving. Um, because they go from A, B, C at the top, and I got a little error there because he's trying to pass over the screen here. It's going to reset his um, parameter and leave him there on the side again. Hopefully my box, eh, got to fix whatever's going on with there. But anyways, it starts um, from here. I'll just show you. This would be like the upper corner of the box here would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Um, and that's just basically determining all the different corners now I'm only checking the outer corners I'm not checking the center part um, that's the whole point of this program is I wanted to make it have the bounding box around the player and of course eventually I moved it over to the assembly language program which is probably still running over here in the background here somewhere yep he's still stuck on something over here um, but that's that's the whole example I wanted to show you with this video we'll go into the code here so you can explore it a little bit more but if anybody knows anything more a little bit more about this I'd appreciate it because I've worked on this thing pretty close to probably about a week now I know it's probably not a lot of time invested but like I said I was gonna wait before I release this video but a video is long overdue and I wanted to give you something I didn't even last week for example even release the that's the tutorial session we have going on with the basic playground, but that's coming again this Friday, by the way, 9.45 p.m. Um, actually, it's going to be 10.45 p.m., sorry, not standard time. I'm moving it up to try to catch up to a few other people eventually. We'll probably move it up to midnight. But anyways, getting back to this, so let me um, go into this um, example to show you this program. I'm going to stop it now, like I did earlier, and actually show you, since this is a coding example, what the program looks like. And turn off my sprite there, too. Okay, so simple setup and everything here, initializing the screen, all this stuff is pretty standard, right? And then getting down to the, the code part here, line 100, you'll see, I'll just set from 100 here, reads the joystick, that's what this 56320 is doing. Um, I have these turned off right now because they're done here, and I was just testing them in different various areas, so I could probably just delete 109 and 110 there. Oops, I just I totally deleted the wrong line there, it's not good. I don't think I had a line 19, hopefully not. Um, but yeah, everything should be good there. So, 
and of course line 70 is creating the the characters on the screen is pulling them from the string right here and randomly plotting them on the screen there but line 100 is our essential program that is controlling everything with the joystick from the basic program it's just reading the stick positions from the x and the y position that is basically the horizontal and the vertical positions remember what i mentioned about the four pixels it's skipping at the four pixels there um to get it to move faster <laughs> okay and in here i'm actually determining various displays, I'm sorry, various position points of where the bounding box is hitting at and where it's positioned at. When you saw that box drawn here earlier, I have positions pointed and saying, is it at this position or this position or this position? And these are basically pointing that from the X and the Y coordinates. And that's why there's X and Y coordinates to tell where exactly, because you're going to see there's actually, it's checking three. It's checking one, two, three at the top if it's hitting at the top, one, two, three at the bottom if it's hitting at the bottom, and of course it's just the left and the right side. So you can see right here goes into the loop here of GoSub of 400. So let's go to that next after we move the joystick. And here, uh, first thing I'm doing, and actually this is probably an error right here. I should probably erase the 400. That's probably why I got that error. Actually, I, that was probably what was causing that error. It was trying to recall the previous X position after, before it even hit a collision. So here's where it starts off. I called XC just for X character, by sprite to the background character. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking X and I'm subtracting 24 from it. 24 represents if I'm not wrong here, um, it's 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 the, the width of the sprite, yeah, because it's the x coordinate. So 24 is the width of the sprite. We're dividing it by eight because these individual characters are only pixels. They're they're basically eight by eight. While the sprite is much larger, you saw the sprite around the background character is much larger. So as a result of that, you have to mathematically calculate the actual inner position to make. It's kind of like shrinking the sprite down to fit inside of one of these characters for example let, let me just grab this sprite, put it back on the screen to show you what i'm talking about here okay um and of course i need to position it on the screen here for a second so give me one moment here oh it's at i was gonna turn off the thing here because it's uh, off the screen it's in it's in um the high end zone here so to speak okay so where are you at boy All right, so maybe the Y went off the screen too. Let me see here. 53, 249, 100. And I have it turned off. That's my bad. Okay, so I need to uh, turn it back on. There it is. Why did you get back over there again? Okay, 53, 264, comma, zero. There we go. Yeah, I was trying to get it right on the screen there. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll clear the screen here. I'm going to go up here. And just to show you what I'm talking about, so it's comparing, let's like comparing this box to this A, right? This sprite is 24, I believe it's by 21 pixels. I'd have to look at that line again. I know it's 24 by 21 or something like that. So it's 24 width across. And these, each, each of the, we see the squares are, these are actually eight pixels right there. This is another eight pixels going at another eight pixels. So if you look at it this way, it's like taking eight times three, which is 24, right? That tells you how wide the sprite is, an example. And this character over here, though, it's much smaller. It's actually eight by eight going across. So you see, this is the difference. It's, it's three times as wide as the actual pixel character. And to prove that here, um, put three A's in here. You can see that they're actually taking up three spaces while this is only taking up one. And it's actually, you know, occupying all the corners here, of course. Now, I just, let me just do this appropriately here. Let's change the color so you can kind of see a little bit better here. Okay, I think that one's good. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, like that. And then it's also calculating the vertical position from here to there. Put back on my thing there. So we're calculating eight going down, but actually it doesn't go down to 24. So it goes down to 21. So it's technically, it's not as wide as it is. It's, it's not as uh, tall as it is wide. This should, this is gonna be 24. So for example, if I subtract 21, which is supposed to be um, what it is, um, why can't I do this in my head right now? <laughs> That's going to be 23, 4, 2, 3, 24, so that's a 3, right? 
So, because, yeah, because three times, of course. So, the point I'm making at is there's a difference between, let's just write this out this way. The width is going to be 24 pixels for the sprite, right? The height is 21 pixels as a result of that. Now, if you take these, and I'm going to have to use my calculator here. Actually, I can just use my calculator here. You won't see me pull this up. I love OBS Studio because it doesn't like block your screens or anything. So 24 times 21 is what? 504. So 24 times 24 times 21 is 504 pixels total, right? That's how many total is being made up in this entire space. Now, keep in mind, again, these eight characters, they're eight by eight. So let's just put that down here. Let me show you what I'm talking about there. So that's eight times eight equals a total of 64 pixels total. And if that's just counting the eight going across and eight going down. So essentially, um, eight times eight is 64, just like I showed you there. Um, and yeah, though I couldn't calculate the other one earlier, but basically, kind of 24 minus 21, of course, is three, right? And that's the difference. It's got like, I guess it's taking out three, um, I don't know, bits or whatever it's doing there. But somebody wants to correct me on that, that's fine. I wanted to show this to you graphically so you can follow what I'm saying here when you're seeing an example of the sprite moving on the screen. Now, hopefully, if you get to take a screenshot of that, that's fine or whatever. Move it over there a little bit. And that's what this lines down here are doing now. Let's get rid of our sprite again. Let's turn off that bit. And right here, so line, um, oh, 400. I don't know what went in there. I was right there earlier. So 400 is showing the sprite. Like I said earlier, the sprite width, as you saw earlier, they were dividing it by eight to basically shrink it down, as you saw earlier, to compare to that A character, which is much smaller. Um, now, this 3.2 is a formula I found that worked for me. And at this point, I can't recall how I did it. I think I calculated something. It was say 3.2 divided by 100. I can't remember how I did it. There's some way I, I calculated it and figured out the coordinates from here to here, and I was able to come up with that that formula. Right now, it escapes me. Um, if I figure it out later, I might put it in the notes. But if somebody else wants to, they can put it in notes too. But that's the way I figured it out to calculate it very precisely to make it do a very precise um, positioning and de collision detection. Um, now this next line actually is irrelevant, so I think I could throw 412 out. Actually, wait, wait, no, no, I, I need, I don't want to erase the whole line, I just, I don't need this first part. I was working with some corners when I was trying to calculate, this is before I did the axis positioning on the screen, and I was trying to do it directly without using, without using the actual sample you saw me earlier when I was moving the bounty box around the screen, wherever this one just went to. Oh. So, as a result of that, I had to figure out some different calculations. Now these uh, V0, you see V0, V2, V3. I just mark these as the different positions of where it's detecting it. So it starts at the top here. If you remember our bounding box again, it starts at V0, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, V8. I'm sorry, it's one, is it zero? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's got the, look at it this way. At, just say this is like V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, V8, V9. And then that's just what I used to the variable to keep track of, you know, where that position. Now I also had to use these minus signs to kind of position it correctly. So it's going to start here and you kind of move it over there. If you have the minus it, subtract it, add it, da da da, to get it positioned correctly around the bounding box, so to speak. Um, and that's what this does after it pre-calculates it. Next, it's going to do go down here and start checking what I call the boundaries. And this is where it's actually peeking directly at the screen. Now, for those who may not know this, I know I'm going to get a lot of people who do know this, but if you peek into like a memory location here, 52, what this is doing is it's reading this upper corner screen here of screen memory. 
I'm gonna see if I can do this right. And I believe it's character four. So character four is representing the four in this upper corner right here. So this is actually the actual character for um, the four, as you see right here on the screen. So the 52 is a screen code character that positions that correctly on the screen. And this is the actually pet XE character, if you would. That's just telling me how I know what's in the background. And let me just um, isolate those lines so I can show you what I'm talking about here. So we'll go down to the next lines here, which is 500 on right here. So remember earlier we captured the V0, V1, V2. Now that I've captured them, I'm passing them down into these new variables. I'm creating a new set of variables, S3, S4, S5. And um, I believe these were the body boxes here. Okay, actually I didn't even need all this. I just now realized here. Let me let me go back to the loop just to make sure I haven't. I left some other code in here from before. I wanted to make sure it wasn't. Okay, you know what I did? Um, this is old code still. So I have these different positions. After we read the, the first positions here, you can see it's go, It's reading the correct joystick locations to go to the exact um, areas to pull the next screen displays from memory and right here oh wait actually these are the bounding boxes these are the displays on the screen which is what I was talking about earlier and what I'm trying to find out here it does this is this must be my older program I had a different one here so excuse me on that um, but essentially this is reading the memory locations to tell where it's hitting that bounding box at and I just called it S3 S4 and S5 to represent the V3 um, and I just noticed I have UL here, VR, so this must have been, let me just list this for a second here. I want to see if this is um, my old program for a minute here. I think this is like my older one. I've written this so many times, you can probably tell with me talking here, that I've had so many different techniques I was trying to get this to work. But essentially, it's doing the same thing. It's just reading. This V0, it might not be reading V0 at this point, but it's reading those positions around there and it's capturing them. Right here, it reads VL. So VL, I didn't explain that very, I should have went over that, I'm sorry. So 410, after it reads this, this is reading the screen memory. You saw me earlier when we poke in the screen memory here, for example. I'll just poke, um, I don't know, any value, doesn't matter. I'll just poke 102. I have to do it again here. You'll see right there, it put this character in the upper corner screen here. That's what this is doing. Is it's reading that upper corner screen, and then it's pre-calculating from that sprite position on the screen where our cursor is going to be at. So as our sprite is moving at XC and YC, it's able to pre-calculate where it's going to be positioned at, as you saw me when I ran the example earlier. So let me go back to the 400 on to show you that. And it's full glory here. So... VL is reading XC, as we saw earlier, it's taking the sprite, <clears throat> dividing it by 8 to get it down to the pixel size. And of course my little formula here I figured out. And then once it's got that, this is the sprite conversion down to the correct coordinates for the character position. And then of course these are the different positions. And then from down here, it's reading these, after it gets this coordinate, this mathematical number, it's going to use that to read the actual screen location there. And sometimes, somehow I wish I had actually created a display, but for those who are following this all the way, if the video is somehow still confusing to you, please let me know in the comments something's confusing because also you, can, you will get this accessible on my website as much as I can. I'm still building content related to these articles on my website. Somebody gave me a good advice about that a while ago. Keep them in sync, and that's what I'm doing my best. I'm working in 9 to 5, so I'm doing my best I can for that. But yeah, there'll be related articles. Um, to each other back to back there so but it's just reading in the screen memory location from the calculated position now it knows underneath it as you saw me when I peeked the uh, screen earlier at 1024 you'll see it's reading the 4 here because we're still at line 4 let's read um, line 5 it'll give me a different which is the 49 and then of course if we set that one you'll see the 1 up here which is right next to the 4 here right this is reading the next screen character position and that's what that's doing. It's just reading those screen locations. So wherever you're moving on the screen, it's able to keep track of that because that's what these values are doing is they're keeping track of my X and my Y and my XC and my YC here to see where the cursor is moving on the screen at. So it always knows and it can always check. So it's a very simple program if you look at it. Um, that's all it's doing. It's basically, and this is, um, 
an adaption or an extension of the one I did originally with the sprite character to background collision. I just expanded it and figured, hey, if I could get this background collision stuff working, this would be really cool in a game. Because this game eventually, to kind of backtrack here a little bit, the game is eventually going to have, as you saw in one of my other videos, Castle. Because it's an RPG style, so you'll be able to walk through a forest, it'll have caves, it'll have dungeons. When I'm done with it, I want it to be like a full RPG. It's so something fully playable with sprite character interactions on the screen, bad guys, and statistics, you know, kind of ultimate style, Ultima style, right? Okay, but that's where I'm going with this, step by step in sequence, of course. So this is this example. Let me show you the other original example now. Um, I think that's pretty much I had for that one. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything here. And these listings also, I'll make these available as um, files on the website where you can download them. If I haven't been doing it, please remind me. I know I need to do that. I'm doing so much stuff anymore. But anyways, let's go back to the other one here. The original one here and I'm going to access that one over here so I can control that one and we're going to stop this one and now guess what you get to see the assembly language well you won't see it but let me um let me hide our little sprite actually I can move him that's right because see this is all interacting in the background watch this but for those who may not know what's going on here I can still move my character around the screen. I think he's stuck on a collision. Yeah, he's not moving right now because he's hitting the background characters here. This is the code. I can't move him. You might see him moving there a little bit here. But watch this. As soon as I move down here, suddenly he can move, right? If I go up here, he's going to hit the thing again. So he's, he's detecting real time inside of a raster interrupt. And he's able to detect that real time there. So I'm going to move him off the screen over here somewhere so we can kind of see program here which is a uh, very similar stuff it's utilizing the semi language now i turned off a lot of the basic stuff here because i was doing a lot of testing you'll see a lot of the similarities i had here before but since i'm using the full joystick control in a semi language at this point i just eventually i found out the basic program was pretty much not even working at this point it wasn't even the only thing it was doing is doing a system call and activating a semi language and exiting back to basic because here it runs inside the loop you'll see i i up here in the early in the program i let me just break this down for you you see the example from before here on line 62 and 65 i'm reading in the sprite character that's where the sprite data is being read and then from here i'm reading in the semi language here and then if you go down further i think it's on 68 I do the call. This is the call to the interrupt that's allowing my little sprite guy to move around here, which he's stuck there again. He's in a corner and he can't move. <laughs> Get him over here somewhere. Okay, we'll keep him over there for now. And now that we read the assembly language here, we're just drawing the stuff back on the screen here. The joystick, let's go through that routine. You'll see that's very similar to what we had earlier, right? It's just reading, um, let me see if I can position this a little bit better. I don't have a whole lot of room here, so I'm just going to try to position it like that so I can try to get it as close as I can to the screen there. And here, the joystick is not existent, but this earlier, I didn't probably explain on the other one, but it was capturing your previous X position before you move the joystick. That's how you capture where the X, where the character was before he hit the wall. So if you're moving, your character has incremented by what? One pixel or two, four pixels in that example. It has to remember what were the four pixels earlier in order to know that now that I, I hit the wall, I'm gonna make sure I'm able to not go through that wall, but rather retain back to where I was earlier. And that basically stops me from running into the walls in the example. Now in semi language, it's a little bit different. Now, for those who wanna know, I didn't, um, and I actually just now realized I should have set this up in OBS Studio. Yeah, because I'm not reading the desktop screen here. So I need to probably capture another notepad. Let me just pull up my notepad here. Let me have to edit this part out. And this is what I call the fast sprite routine. I'll have to, excuse me a second, create this in OBS Studio real quick. This is the uh, semi language routine that I converted for the, the statements here. And again, this will all be available on the website here. So I'll go down here to show you, this is the beginning loop here. And of course I can't expand it much more and I hope you can see that. It's calling an interrupt here. So first thing it's doing is it's reading, they are setting the interrupt essentially 
which is what it's allowing it to do. And this is a simple set of protein you can do a basic that's going to read and down this program below here. Um, and actually, I think that's up here. I'm sorry, I was in the wrong one. So this is the one down here that sets the vectors for 788, the high, and the low, and the high byte vectors to point to the routine and then clear the interrupt so we can go back to the reading the keyboard and everything else again. Because the interrupt interrupts the process. It stops what it's doing to take care of your little interrupt and then it starts back with the keyboard operations, I.O. and everything else that's going on with your computer. That's what allows the sprite you saw earlier to move in the background there, free of no interaction. You know, where basically he, you can type in your program and he's still moving in the background or whatever. Um, and this is what I did, and I set him here to read, um, and actually I think this might need some revision here, because this is, again, I was doing a lot of different stuff with this one. Let me see here. I think I'm going to go down to this one, because earlier I was doing something different with this. I'm just going to go right to there, because this is what I was doing. Is I was capturing his um, OX. Remember, that's OX is the position he was at before he moved, before he hit a collision wall. I was capturing the OX so I could restore the OX after he had moved. Now, if his position was not able to move correctly, then I would just jump out of that interrupt. And if you're jumping out of interrupt, it's like you're not going to go to the rest of the code down here. Now, as a result of this, um, this is not going to allow the joystick to move if there's a collision going on here. Otherwise, if there's a collision going on, it's going to execute down here. And I'm pretty sure I didn't update this, but let me add in some lines here because I know I'm going to pull up the other example here for a second because I, I changed this a lot. And, of course, I need to access that. Give me one second here. I'm gonna get back to the screen here. Okay, here we go. So 2045, this is the assembly language, and this is the top part here. Actually, wait. You're still looking at that one, sorry. So right here is the, the assembly language here. And this is the what I did is I made the changes here. And this was the interrupt you saw earlier, but this one I did not add it back to Notepad. But I could copy it here since I can read byte statements and show you what I was essentially doing here. I know people don't like when I do this, but heck with it. I'm going to do it anyway. If you don't like it, we may not want to be friends. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm reading line 2062. You can see right here. Right here, 2062. And I'm setting the interrupt. And this right here is reading the background collision over here. So I'm just going to... I'll show this to you in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and write this over here. So I'm reading it's 53279 and then I'm comparing it to a zero and if the branch is equal we're going to read our little joystick routine or otherwise we're going to exit that loop right here. And I'll switch back over here in a minute but I didn't want to bore you too much with the notepad here for a second. And then down here I'm also line 2064 here. I'm actually, right, I'm sorry, 2063 here, I'm actually reading that 253, which you saw earlier, 255. I think this one is a little bit backward. Let me just uh, flip this on top of here. Okay, now that I see what I was doing here, okay. I was essentially checking the collision detection in the same language because I realized it wasn't working correctly in basic the way I wanted it to. So I con converted it over to a semi language here. So I'm going to make sure that part looks correct. And then after that, we're reading that, looks good. And then we're essentially reading the joystick. I think we're good to go here. Okay, looks good now. Okay, so let me switch back over here so I can show you what I've been doing on this side so it's not a mystery to you. Okay, so what I did is I added these new lines right here. Right here, this is the where it's reading, memory location 53279. And for those who want to know, this is the sprite to background collision detection. Or you can think of it like that A I showed you earlier. Sprite is contacting the, that A on the screen. And this one's not using, by the way, any uh, conversion of mathematics. It's just using simple, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's using simple background detection with the hardware registers, but unfortunately they're kind of flawed. Which eventually what I'll have to do is I know I'm going to have to convert most of this into a semi language. I'm going to have to convert the mathematical screen detection into a semi for this to work unless somebody else can tell me there is a way to, to get around this collision detection issue, which I have not seen it yet. But anyways, 
It's reading the background collision detection here. It says if it's a zero, this means that there's no hardware collision going on, so we can safely read the joystick. So when there's no hardware, um, let's write down here, read joy. Oh, actually, it's down here, I'm sorry. Right down below here. So when there's no hardware collision going on, we want to move him freely on the screen. As you saw earlier, I can move around freely. Let's go back here to demonstrate this for a second. And switch between these. Okay, let me. <laughs> I got him trapped on the screen there again, and I got to get back to my vice here. Still trying to get used to all this OBS stuff here. So put this over here. I think I'm going to eventually learn to position my windows better. That'll save me more time. But over here, hit enter a few times here. And you can see he's moving freely on the screen there, right? As a result. And if we come back to here. I just now realize I can make this larger screen. That's kind of cool. All right, much better. I like this. So why it doesn't let me expand it that way? It only lets you expand it to so many lengths. At least you can see a little bit better right there. I'll just kind of scroll through it to show you here. Not bad. Okay, so what it's doing here is it's detecting the background collision here. Right here, memory location 53279, and that's where you saw the sprite moving earlier as he was colliding with the background character. And it's also going down, it, it, the reader joystick, which is down here. This is gonna, let's just go down and, and follow that in suit anyway. So let's say if it's zero, goes down, <coughs> and it reads the joystick position, whether it's, you know, left, right, down, or up, as you can see right here. Yeah, ignore this. This is just something I was doing before. Um, and then from here it says, okay, once you find that, go to the appropriate routine down here. And this is where it's going to move the position, whether it's left, right, up, or down. And I think I also did something else with this because I made several modifications to this here. Let me just take a look at my routine again here. Because I know I went in here and I was capturing. I think I remember what I did here. Let me just uh, modify this for a second. So I take this line out. Actually, this one, right, left. This is a really old one, by the way. Okay, I just now realized this is not the most update one. Sorry about that, guys. But anyways, what I'm doing is I'm trying to... Oh, here it is. See, I, I had two of these in here. Here we go. Countdown. Okay, go down. Go up right here. Um, Yeah, this video right down here. Continue up. These are the ones I'm looking for. So this 820 and all this, this is with me trying to do some weird collision detection with it, trying to get it. But this is the one for the, for the most example, what it's going to look like here. Is it's going to read, if he's moving, this is the Y. If the sprite is moving down, it's going to decrement it by 252 pixels. And it's going to check um, that position and store it into the vertical position this is wrong too. <laughs> 53 two, that's what I get for working in Notepad. But it, um, essentially, it's vertically positioning the sprite on the screen and it's moving it on him to move down the screen, as you saw earlier there. And now that I know I'm just going to remove some of these other sections I don't need to kind of clear this up. Okay, there's the left one. The left one looks good. The right one needs some work. Left one, this is my old left one. I can take that one out. We'll get this right here. So go left. I'm just going to call this one go left. So going right, excuse me. So going um, right, actually, this would be increment, by the way. So if you're right, you're incrementing. If you're um, left, you're decrementing. So I can take this section out too because I don't need this one anymore. Okay. Decrementing right there. And if you're going down, you're decrementing down. You're going up, you're incrementing. And I think I can take this one out. Okay, let's do this, actually. This would be decrement. Decrement. There we go. And I think that's good. Go down. Thanks for bearing with me on this a second, guys. I'll probably just re-explain this to you guys. Okay. Well, it may not be in perfect order here, so left and right are kind of like flipped here a little bit. I could flip them, but just to make it very accurate with what I'm trying to do here. So I got the left down, I got down next. I think that's good. Yeah, 
Now it looks like it's good. So now it's reading the joystick first. It's going to read the left position here. And that's right here. And it's decrementing 251. It's just a hardware register in zero page that allows you to write your own byte data there. It's untouched by basic, so you can freely use it for your own use. And then essentially at this point, I'm using this to keep track of my X register because you may not saw it earlier in the program here, but I'll go back up here for a second. But essentially, I peek these locations into here to read them directly into my semi-language program here. At line 40, it's reading 251. It's reading the X position here, and it's reading the Y position. So it's passing these parameters directly down to these um, zero-page registers so it can work directly with the program at the lower level, of course. And then I had to peek them so I could get the sprite to appear on the screen in, in those appropriate locations. And all, and all that works because of this syscall we're doing, which is what is activating our program, you know, as we saw down here. Eh, where we at? Where we saw down here in the data statements that are being read in. These are, this is the machine language that's reading this into the semi language that you saw me playing with down here. So, reads the left and then it reads the right. It's incrementing it um, pretty straightforward. Increments just moving it across the screen that way. And decrement is moving it, you know, that way. So basically, decrement goes to the left, and increment is going to the right. And going down is going to be the same thing from our Y position. I always want to, like, use the OBS Studio. Anyways, going down here, this is our increment. And going back up is our decrement. So think of it like the detraction versus the incrementing, you know. And then that's what this is doing. So essentially, it's just keeping, and it's keeping track of the hardware sprite. Where the position in 40, 53, 240 is the horizontal, and of course 53, 249 is the vertical sprite, right? Uh, this was some other stuff I was doing, and I changed all this. This was de detecting. I was going to use this later to keep track of um, my mathematical conversion in a semi language once it's able to track where it's basically writing in those bytes you saw me earlier at the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, H, which represents the bounding box where it's hitting at so it could detect the collision but I didn't get that far yet but I was working on trying some things like so I was trying a lot of things with this trying to get it to work but that's about as far as I got I just wanted to show you that's the assembly language um, simple example the assembly language that's running behind the scenes okay so going back to the, the main video here, I think I might be pretty far over time while well, this one's almost like 45 minutes I gotta stretch this one carry this one down here but I think I covered this one well enough too. This was the bounty box one. Yeah, we went over that one. Actually, did I go over that one earlier? I mean, not going over that one. Let me just uh, pull it back up here for a second as I continue to get used to OBS Studio. And here, this is, um, there's some slight modifications. This one's utilizing the locations. And this is probably what I was talking about here. Yeah, this is, uh, no, this is the original example. Okay, let me see here. I think this is the one. This is the one I didn't show you. Okay. We're doing a lot of stuff here. So this is the one I wanted to show you. This is the one that keeps track of the, all the actual positions on the screen here. And I do believe this is the one. Yeah, it's right here. So you see it says check up collision. So this is keeping track of all of those uh, bounding box positions as it goes down through the loop here. So I'll just set from 1,000 going down here to show you. And this is, um, again, it's keeping track of where it's positioning at on each screen based on the, the joystick appropriate movement. And then from there, once it detects it, it traps the OX to remember the previous X position. And that's what allows the box to bounce up against the screen. Now I can't move this box on the screen when I'm in the listing. I can only move it inside the program because it's not operating from the simulation language, of course. Okay. And then I have some simple calls like 1200 here, which basically positions the sprite on the screen. And you can see in here, let me see example here, it's changing the, the color as I hit the, the border color and stuff like that. And that's pretty much, it's pretty straightforward though. For the most part, it's they're all pretty identical. Yeah. This is just reading the 400 and all that right here, like I had earlier. You saw this example I went over earlier, and then it's checking the boundaries right there. So they're all they're all pretty similar in a way. So I think I removed this section and I ended up using the other one. But yep, 
So hopefully um, this video wasn't too overwhelming and you're probably still maybe wondering, you know, where all this is going in the end. The end result, honestly, guys, is an actual game, like I said, where you'll be able to use, you know, your joystick and this, basically this is an Xbox controller and play it like a regular Commodore 64 game. You'll also be able to transfer it if you want to your actual Commodore 64 and play it. My dream one day is to be able to create actual games and sell them. That's where I'd like to go one day. Um, 8 Bit Guy sent a great example of that, and he's got an example out there. Um, I can't think of the name of his uh, game right now, it escapes me. But um, yeah, there's kind of stuff I want to go toward, but this is going to be eventually an RPG where it'll have graphic characters on the screen, and you'll be able to walk through actual graphical backgrounds and you'll be able to interact with characters, fight monsters, you know, and rescue. The whole idea is you're rescuing these people that have been kidnapped by this, um, it's, it's like the Dark Ages, right? So these barbarians and all these uh, um, monsters or whatever had terrorized these people, came into the towns, if you know the history of the Dark Ages, and they started blaming them for all the accidents. So I want to kind of keep it consistent with history. I'm probably giving away a lot of plot here, but essentially, they're going back and they're taking these people from the villages and they're making them prisoners in the castles. So you got to eventually work your all the way up to the castle and save these people. Of course, along the way, you're fighting off, you know, all these crazy characters and these barbarians and these people that are barricading the way. So, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I definitely appreciate your subscriptions. Um, yeah, we're getting more videos out, but this one's going to take a little bit more work on my part. To really see um like i said i'm almost there but not quite because it's still he's still getting trapped on the background there so if i can get around that or somebody has ideas let me know as i mentioned i'm gonna call this one uh night because i'm at 47 minutes thank you obs for keeping track of that for me um this has been kind of a trial two years in obs you saw kind of some flip flops going on here so i appreciate um your patience as i continue to get better at this and work it through thanks for watching guys have a great day